will probably be familiar with one of the many travel planners that exist around the world. When you type in your destination in a Dutch planner for public transport, for example, you'll get a typical figure or pattern like this. When not using a car, switching between modalities is a normal thing for the urban traveller. As an end user of, of mobility systems, changing modalities is a very common practice for most urbanites. In this video, we will have a look at chains of mobility and, in particular, the links that make up these chains. We will see that mobility chains are a char character characteristic element of all urban mobility systems. I will show you that the ease of transferring between different means of transport is crucial to the success of mobility systems and for the success of slow mobility specifically. Making the chains or shifting between modalities is a practice that most urban people know through experience. The emotions, frustrations and discussions that go along with these experiences, experiences can be very influential in the success or failure of a sustainable mobility innovation. Shifting between modalities can't be avoided when moving through the mobility system of a city. An urban mobility system typically consists of networked infrastructures, which include particular hubs, transferia or stations that have been designed in such a way that the transfer from one transport modality to another can proceed in a smooth, efficient way. For example, when you visit a city, you may have to park your car outside the centre. Take the underground to bring you into the city centre and then use your feet or a bike to explore the tourist highlights. In this example, you follow a particular mobility chain that already involves three different modalities. As an experienced traveller, you will know how to connect the different modalities as you navigate through, through the city. You know where to change from the bus to the underground, how to use the city bike system and whether it will save you time if you take a bike instead of the subway. Fluent connections between different forms of mobility are important from an end user perspective. For a certain chain of mobility to become an attractive option to people, the connections between different types of mobility should be smooth. Limited waiting time at the bus when you come from the train and no cumbersome registration processes before you can jump on a shared bicycle are important. Research shows, for example, that, ex that people experience waiting time on a platform as three times slower compared to in-vehicle time. So, seven minutes of waiting on a train platform feels like more than 20 minutes. Thus, the success of a mobility transition depends for an important part on the accessibility of the different forms of mobility and the quality of the connections between different types of mobi mobility. The weakest connection in a mobility chain will determine its success and smooth connections are, therefore, paramount to sustainable mobility transitions. I will illustrate this with my own experience of commuting from home to work. I typically get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go from Utrecht to Delft. It takes me 10 minutes to bike from my home to the Utrecht railway station. As you can see here, the big bicycle parking area in Utrecht is located extremely close to the train platforms. I have a smart card for public transport, so I do not need to pay for my bike storage. I just hold my card in front of a pole and beep, my bike is stored and I am allowed to use the train. In Delft, it is just the opposite. The cycle storage is about 50 meters from the platform. I hold my car again in front of a pole and beep, I have paid for my train trip and I am allowed to enter the cycle storage area where I, get, where I can get my bike, which brings me to work in about five minutes. As you can see from my daily, daily commute, this mobility chain is organized in such a way that it fits my travel routines. In general, you can say that mobility chains are most effective when they are tailor-made for the particular travelling routines of major segments of the urban population. The example also highlights the role of ICTs. These developments are boosting the connectivity of transport methods and can drastically change how we move to the city. Old mobility chains become obsolete and new connections become popular 
and common. ICTs and connections that fit better with the everyday life of people, therefore, promise to make slow infrastructures mainstream in many urban settings. These slow infrastructures would not just be for leisure, but for shopping, commuting and business as well.